Hello, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I am Noah Ruiz, designer here at Adafruit. Pedro Ruiz is joining me, my co-host. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yep, this is a show we take uh, DIY, electronics, 3D printing, smash them together, make inspiration projects. Let's start off with this week's coupon code is REACTIONS. Type that in during checkout to get 10% off your purchase at theadafruit.com. Yep, this week it's REACTIONS, and it has to do with our project, which we'll show in a little bit here. We have free shipping for orders over $200 or more. Yeah, so definitely check that. We did have some freebies, but we sold out. Yeah. So always want to take advantage of that anytime we have those, because they go out pretty quick. That's right. And if you want more details on it, you know, restrictions apply or whatever, Adafruit.com slash free. Yep, always check periodically on that for if all the updates. you are a fine resident of New York City, same day delivery, still happening. Yep, order in the morning, get it by the afternoon. Yep, Adafruit Daily, get the daily dose of Adafruit tutorials, tips, tricks. Tips and tricks. <laughs> so you had to jump Ollie with your Yeah, printer. so you've seen a 10% increase in a subscription, so. Yeah, thank you guys for subscribing. And uh, we gotta we gotta get on new posts. We like to schedule things in advance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so got a whole bunch of a uh, batch of new uh, tips coming up. Okay, let's jump right into this week's project. It is right here. So uh, on Sunday, I did a live stream on this project. I showed you guys shared with you guys uh, the CAD, and the prior week I showed you guys how to how I brought this design's Eagle CAD. Uh, the, the, the board file, how do I take it, how do I export a DXF file and import it into Fusion or just make dimensions. Um, so you have two different options here. So this is it completely done. It's this week's project. Huge shout out to Tony. Tony got inspired by the, the whole Facebook reactions upgrade. And then GitHub this week or earlier this week. Subsequently updated and added. Same thing. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So um, real quick, the components. Uh, it is a seven segment LED display backpack. You could, of course, use the 14 segment if you have those lying around. Yeah, like I did, right? Um, but uh, you know, we don't really take advantage of the characters, but you totally could. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit there. different in terms of design. So if you want the STL files, let me know in the comments, and I will share that as well, because they are different. They're very slightly different. Mm -hmm. But if you try to put this in this box, it won't fit. Um, so yeah, um, the arcade button is actually from a previous project. We put a NeoPixel ring inside, uh, inside there. So the button, these are those 30 millimeters ultra slim, um, not ultra slim, but pretty slim, low profile buttons. Um, They're definitely slimmer nice. than the other ones that yeah. you got from They don't come with that. LEDs. You got to put one in there. Mm -hmm. And with a 3D printed little holder thing, it actuates the button. Uh, if you check out the, that Lair Belair live stream, it'll tell you a little bit about it and I'll show you how you install it and stuff. So um, again, the, the, we're using the trinket. The five volts or three volt work just as, just as well. They both have the same mounting holes. A very fan silicone. Uh, stranded wire. Yeah, it's like our, what did Lamar say? It's like our uh, top best product. product. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very awesome stuff. Um, it's, it's super it's, bendy. Yeah, it's nice. It's such a joy to work with. <laughs> it is. It, it, once we got it, we just switched everything over. Because mm -hmm. we used to use wa ra wire wrap, which is this thin stuff. It sucks. Mm -hmm. This is some really good premium stuff. But anyway, uh, pretty simple enclosure. As you saw, Pedro took it apart. I did have little corner screws. I don't need them because uh, just the oh, way that. So good on these, yeah. yeah. So a uh, huge shout out again to Tony who wrote this, uh, their journey code, and it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. You press the button and it increases. The cool thing though is that if you disconnect it, it saves uh, an EEPROM. Yeah. So he he wrote it in a way where the number count is stored in an EEPROM. So when I turn it back on, got to wait for the bootloader to clear after, I don't know, three or four seconds, mm -hmm. and it'll turn back on. This turns on instantly because it's just getting power right away. There's nothing really fancy about that. It's just the LED sequin. Love the LED sequin because it has a resistor and a PCB right in there. It's, it's, a little, um, it's so tiny, man. LEDs. You can swallow it. Don't swallow it. But yeah, you can see that the number is retained there. Um, so let's say you want to clear it out. If you want to clear it out, Tony added the feature where if you hold the button down for 10 seconds, or less, depending on how you want to uh, your the code. Yeah. yeah, it'll clear out for you. So really easy way. I think that's a really nice feature. And that's pretty much it, folks. Uh, I went ahead and made two different uh, emoji cons, but you can uh, trace out your own emoji if you want to make a smiley face. There's so many different emojis. I figured I'd just make two of them, the heart and the little thumbs up. Yeah. Notable. Or you can make a thumbs down if you want. Yeah. Like. Notable details about the button is that this isn't a dual printed 
a uh, little cover inside here, so it's two yeah. pieces that just snap into each other. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Print out the, the white disc in white or transparent, mm -hmm. and then a dark color for, for that guy. Or definitely check out the glow in the dark filament that we have in the shop. So oh, wow. Can That's right. Have these in the dark. You can definitely edit the 3D printed files, so you can like yes. mount these on the wall if you're using this like as an attendee counter, have it by the wall or something, just sort of you know up that as people come in, or have it as a like a chest game, you know, scorekeeper. Very uh, handy thing to use there. We did look around on the internet to see what other you know design style and costs for these uh, yeah. the projects. The were. bigger ones are pretty pricey. They can like go up to like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, those are big ones. But you can get really small ones for like five bucks, and those are they don't even have LEDs. They're just kind of they like, don't look anything like this. Yeah. yeah. No. So again, power of three D printing. You can completely customize these uh, boxes to yeah. uh, whatever your use case may be. Yep. And if you want to make it battery powered, because right now it is uh, powered through micro USB, you can definitely fit power. one inside here. Yeah. yeah there's plenty of room there. for like uh, 1200. I think you can fit in there. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can uh, increase the case yeah. as well. All the Fusion 360 files are inside there. Mm -hmm. um, you can check out the layer by layer that you streamed earlier in the week. Yep, guide, video, is it's all up there. Go. So that's this week's project. Yeah. Look at the step by step Tony. on all of the info you're going to need if you want to build one of these. Yeah. Very handy to have. Very, Very fun awesome. project. All right, that's what we're prototyping. That's this week's project. Let's go ahead and jump into layer by layer. Pidgey, got this one. Remember we shared with you guys uh, some, some ex, what do you call it, some experience now? Some experiments from Spark? Yeah, so Spark, for those of you who didn't check, check out last week's uh, episode, is Autodesk's little experiment yeah, showcases that have a bunch of cool little apps that they're building with the Spark platform. So Wire Mesh is one of these, and it's a very easy way to turn uh, meshes into a wireframe. Which Mesh you can, wireframe. Yeah, so you can easily edit these and make them look like uh, Veronoi. Uh, two sliders that control the thickness of the, the wireframe and the thickness of it and the smooth level. This is Nefertiti, isn't it? Yeah, so I just imported a uh, disseminated uh, low poly uh, res model of that, and you can see how quickly that loaded in there, just drop it into your web browser. Uh, all HTML5, so it loads really quick. And um, just two sliders to easily turn this into a very fancy, smooth looking. What are the sliders doing? Thickness and smooth level. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you just drag and drop your stuff in there. So the workflow for this, after I exported the STL out of this, was to cut the uh, top and the bottom inside of Mesh Mixer. OK, so cool. So it's hollow there. and yeah. less material overall. Yep, so I didn't have to do any hollowing inside of Mesh Mixer or do any of the standard, you know, create the pattern tool and, uh, you know, work around to where it doesn't crash inside of there. Oh, OK, yeah. No, you have to paint. A little bit picky. I, I had yeah. to paint around, and, and you could just select all, and it gets into the same. Yeah. OK. So all the only thing I had to do in he, inside here to print it on the Ember 3D printer was just um, rearrange the uh, transformation and scale it to fit the uh, the full um, build area. Yeah, the volume of the build area. And setting up the um, the, the support structures, they use like the, like the branch uh, sort of method uh, methodology for this. So the other thing we had to do here is look at where the red area is once it's done analyzing for where all the overhangs are going to be. So if you oh, remember, cool. for printing an FDM, we had to use like a bunch of support material like on the bottom for the neck. Yeah. Um, here, you just can use one main branch and then have a bunch of little uh, little branches you know, going to the main stem. So one of the things inside of Fusion it, or inside of Mesh Mixer is it doesn't let you quite like stick um, the support material to the bed has like a weird methodology where it likes to float your material up in the air and then um, have a bunch of little support materials there. So all you do is just double click, and it will it can attach to um, some part of the uh, your object. So all we're doing here is just creating one main trunk and then having a bunch of little supporting branches. What I'm calling the upside down Zoeberg method here. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah, so all you got to do is just uh, grab a moderate amount of the overhang there and just attach that to the main um, like trunk, is what I'm going to call it here. Okay. You just have a bunch of little supporting branches all around there. And then you can just create one uh, main branch for the ears and uh, two little branches for the ears. So what are the just, millimeters uh, thickness for these trunks? So folks? if you guys remember before, we had when we released the Ember review video, there was a bunch of settings that you had, that you had to change for like the tip diameter and the trunk diameter for that. Is now, that the same settings? Uh, they have completely, obviously, worked all of their default settings to work a lot more better. So I didn't have to change any of. Oh, that. this is default stuff. That's yeah, nice. You had to tweak the quite oh a bit. Yeah, 
before, like, you know, three versions ago, you had to change all that stuff. Now it's all nice default. They're making all their things work together. And we actually have a very nice time lapse of what this looks like printing. Oh, cool. It's done. Uh, I have a question, though. Um, let's say some, some of our folks want to print it on FDM printer. Would they have to make the, the trunks thicker, the spokes? I believe you would have to yeah. um, because these are, you know, just touching uh, just enough to where they can easily be, be uh, broken off. Mm. So when I was uh, removing all the support material after uh, this came off the bed, yeah. if you want to show that. Yeah, let's quick. do the time lapse. So this was, uh, let's t tell me about the, the total time to print. Yeah, so we're printing at uh, 50 microns here, which uh, an FDM could definitely do, but it's just the quality of the resolution that's coming out of here. But it, yeah, it took around five hours to do. Oh, okay. So uh, one of the uh, pitfalls was that uh, uh, the resin that I was using, uh, some uh, I kept reusing some of the resin, so yeah. there was like a yellow trying tint to it. Trying to be very conservative to it. <laughs> yeah, even though we have like you know a bottle and a half, I was I kept trying to reuse as okay. much as we could. And what happens when you reuse uh, the same? After a while, it d seems like it does have like a shelf life, so it was yeah. uh, having like a yellow tint to it. Yeah. So um, and there is a, a life to. Um, involving the, the tray, the, the tray, yeah, yeah, the little film cover where it gets cloudy. It I think get cloudy, yeah. Mm. So we, we fresh new batch of resin, a fresh mm -hmm. new tray as well, mm -hmm. and you get a really nice print. Let, okay, so you looked at that. Yeah, let's do the two up on this so you can let's see the that. detail on this little guy here. So this uh, <laughs> came out very nice. It doesn't have like the yellow tint that uh, you're not too fond of. It looks nice. Uh, Get nice closer. and transparent, and it closer. also has like that there very nice uh, blue hue yeah. when we're like in the sun. Yeah, it looks awesome. And sort of reminds me of Groot. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> of the top yeah, here. A little bit. And you can definitely see all the tiny little holes that you definitely are not going to be able to resolve with an FDM printer, right around where the Crest logo for that. Yeah. But yeah. this is 50 microns? Uh, 50 microns, yeah. Yeah, some printers can do 50 microns, but not you know, on the Z, but not on the X and Y. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is across. And you can see the quality came out really good. Um, I didn't do any cleanup of, uh, except just removing the material. You can kind of see where the branches were. Oh, I do see that. Right there. Like yeah, so all they did was remain the main branch from here, and that took the rest of the little branches with cool. it. So very easy to remove. So and the bottom is just it's just one yeah, it's it's just completely open on the bottom and top. Yeah, so the default support structures was, you know, trying to connect all this down inside of here, yeah. which, you know, would have been kind of... Um, you know, pain in the butt to Ooh. remove all the support material yeah. on there, and obviously would have completely messed with the surface. Uh, Sorry, you're talking about that. the auto generate? Is there an the auto generate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so I still always try to with, avoid yeah. that. It's like yeah. the auto router. Don't do that for PCP design. <laughs> you don't want to do that. If you know router. what you're doing, yeah, you definitely cool. want to avoid that. All right. And the fine folks over at Autodesk is going to be sending us their CYMK plus W colors, so we can so mix colored resin. Yeah. So we can like. Uh, Look at a Pantone color, try to match that. Oh, we can mix our colors. Exactly. Oh, yes. man. Have like, uh, I want Adabot blue. I definitely want to make some teal. Lady Adabot pink. Blue, some Lady Adabot pink. <laughs> and uh, they're also going to be sending us over the uh, investment casting resin so we can make some metal. Um, so we got to we gotta make a forgery now? We got we to gotta do some Grant Thompson make a little projects? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. going to be cool to uh, test out some of that. So. Be on the lookout for that. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, if you have folks have anything uh, you want to try out, again, Spark uh, dot mm -hmm. is uh, is a bunch of free apps in there. Again, this is Wire Mesh or Wireframe. Damn it, Wireframe. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Mesh dot Wireframe. That's the name of the, the example thing. Next up, uh, I think we're gonna talk about the little uh, Theta S camera that we've been playing around. Phil's with. been doing a lot of 360 VR stuff. So, yeah. so he you, said, if you guys want to get one, get it, play around with it, figure it out. Mm -hmm. So this is it. Some cool stuff. If you checked out this week's Time Lapse Tuesday, it was a 360 version. Uh, definitely encourage you guys to check that out. Yeah. So we'll, what we want to do in this segment is just show you guys a little bit of the workflow, video production-wise, how to get the video out, how to how mm -hmm. to get it, how to modify it a little bit. Yeah, because so, Phil's been playing with it, but he's only been doing all the offloading using the phone. Okay. So, the, so how do you get the footage off the phone? So on a Mac, all you do is use image capture to just grab, you know, dump That's all like the footage That's like built-in uh, utility. I think yeah, Windows exactly. has something similar. When you plug in a camera, it, it it's just a file explorer. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it file should be just a file explorer. So okay. super easy. Just um, they're still working on the HDMI uh, output. And oh, so you can do it on TV or something. Yeah, yeah. So if you jump over to all of the uh, Yeah, well, first thing I wanted to show you guys is here's what it looks like. MP4, right out straight mm -hmm. out of the Yeah, before you uh, unwrap yes. it, yeah. 
It so. has internal memory. There's not a card, is there? No, so it's got, I think, 8 gigs in there, which okay. uh, should be enough um, for you you know, offload all the okay. footage. So you see just two spherical videos, because that's what it has. It has two lenses mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah, so it's recording at 1920 by 1080. Um, once you lay it out um, on flatten it, there's it'll a utility turn into, uh, app, right? 920 by 960 is what it turns it into. Yeah, yeah. It's the there's a um, app that you can get on their website that will do the stitching for you and uh, flatten it. And right. this is what it looks like if uh, you jump over to the timeline. The video. timeline video, uh, the the little photo of it, or the flatten one. Okay. Number one. So here it is. Yeah, so this is it in Premiere. Uh, cut. Took a little bit of tries to figure out what the best angle would be for laying out all the text and getting you know the best experience of being able to have everything positioned where you know yeah. there weren't any empty areas or anything like that. So you took the ultimakers and you just face them together and put the camera right in the middle there. So yeah. that's how that was done. So luckily this uh, print this is a very awesome print by Option Eight. Mm -hmm. uh, if you check out the Apple Watch dock, a uh, fantastic uh, model that he put together, um, has two parts. One with the um, charging dock that just slides into the Mac Classic shell. And we just printed both of those out. Um, so you can like look around as both uh, parts are being printed. And then we just set had these settings on these sides there. Okay. And uh, one, of, one of the considerations you want to make is just uh, to have the footage be just a little bit longer so the uh, audience has a little bit more time to look around and see everything that's going on without missing anything that's happening behind them. So you're pulling up there the text size, I believe. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, s to play this too in a little bit. Oh, so. with the flattened version looks for that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so usually our text size is at you know around 120 uh, pixels. Uh, one of the things we had to shrink down just so it's not like completely you know wrapping around your entire field of view is to drop down, drop that down to like uh, 50 uh, pixels. There's uh, quite a bit size. of uh, testing back and forth on YouTube because that's the only way to get that test out the yeah. actual VR experience is to get the metadata mm -hmm. into into the YouTube uploader and that's how you preview it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think and this is one of the coolest scenes. So you can um, you know see what you usually are viewing. What you're focused on. You're focused on yeah, and then you can see you know sort of the behind the scenes. Yeah. Here's the cameraman. Without having Pedro. a separate uh, video, yeah, you can see the whole studio in there and. Of course, we're going to do a whole studio tour now with this guy. So, okay. if you have any uh, specific things you want to check out on, you know, like our tool rack or the way we're sorting our filament, definitely comment below, mm -hmm. and we'll uh, cool. yeah. consider that. All right, and the last screenshot here is yeah, just the size that you want to scale smaller. your footage down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's down to thirty percent. Um, this is the end card that we have in every video. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to graphics, things have to be smaller yep. overall. Just things are smaller. Yeah, you want to think of it like, like thirds, yeah. Right. OK. So All right, well, here's what the video looks like. Um, unflattened, right? Yeah. So it looks kind of trippy. <laughs> yeah. This is what you would see if your phone, your device doesn't support VR, huh? It's just like or on your video. Apple TV, yeah, or your, your Apple TV. I guess Chromecast and other Chromecast, stuff. Yeah. All Anything that stuff that has, would have probably doesn't have it yet. Yeah. yeah. But very cool. Um, nice little test on being able to show two different prints going on at the same time. You can look around and uh, see all the settings without, you know, sort of yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, laying it over. I image. think you were saying uh, another thing, another sort of tip is to make your content longer. You're gonna miss stuff, especially mm -hmm. when you're looking at two prints at the same time. What did you do for that? Yeah, so just made the interval a little bit longer, just so you had more of it. Okay. So you didn't have, have it at loop time. or something? You have a loop? Uh, no, I was gonna I was gonna loop one of them, but uh, ended up just um, stretching uh, scale uh, rate stretching it so okay. it was a little bit longer. Cool. So yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it already in VR and you can see everything. Is there a choo choo on, on the floor? I see a choo choo. It's like it's like <laughs> these it's like I spy stuff like look at that, look at uh, that right. over here. A lot of different <laughs> stuff to look at. Very cool. All right, so that's just our first test, really, of playing around with VR. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have any, if you guys have any ideas or anything you want to see, let us know again. Yeah, I think we'll okay. do a uh, 360, you know, just a live stream of uh, when we're just working in the studio. Oh wow, you can do. Oh, that's right, you VR, can do hug yeah. VR. Okay, cool. Oh, definitely check that out. Coming up. All right. Now the cool thing for the shop talk that we're looking at for this weekend is new can I show the drive website first? extruder. Yeah. All right, let's do the website first. So, so check this out, guys. Find folks over at Flexon. Have a very cool Flexon. extruder. Look at this website. So this is a new upgrade to sort of the whole extruder. It's like the OSIP block for Cartesian machines, mm -hmm. I guess yeah, you could so say. So take a look at this. You can clearly see what this thing is doing. Um, it has a self-cleaning uh, gear here. It's like a brush metal uh, doohickey. <laughs> and it's cleaning, it's cleaning uh, the, the, the gear tooth. 
while it's while it's extruding. Mm -hmm. Now, what this promises is that you get uh, less jams with flexible filament. So this is made for flexible filament. Yeah. And the, pro the one of the features is that you can print flexible material at 70 millimeters a second with yeah. high quality. Yep. So that's this a big is deal. The 60 Shore, which is the uh, regular NinjaFlex, and with the brand new Cheetah NinjaFlex coming out, um, I think you're able to do up to 100 millimeters yeah. a second. And you'll get better overhangs overall. Exactly, so that's yeah. very cool. Self cleaning Good drive, resolution. brush consistently clears the drive roller of plastic shavings, keeping the teeth sharp. So that's that's mm -hmm. a really good thing there. And if you scroll a little bit down too, oh, yes. you can see um, some of the problems I'm just going to fix, which is the poor filament support for oh, yeah. Ninja Flex. Oh, uh, how'd that happen, man? This yeah. is this is Anybody the standard who's tried block, the standard <laughs> spring-loaded block from your replicator mm -hmm. or your um, your duplicator 4x or i3. Mm -hmm. I think they have the same extruder, right? Yeah. And we've all encountered this uh, uh, print there in the middle with the yeah. wrong drive compression when you mm -hmm. get you know sort of um, air gaps in yep. your print. In the third one here on the right, the very messy, yeah. <laughs> grinded filament. You have filament. to clean it out every every <laughs> month or two, depending on how much hours you're putting in. Exactly. So they have like a nice little brush inside there. Yeah. So you, you can out. also. So it comes with three different nozzles. Right? So this is like an also block, so yeah. you can easily switch out your nozzle without too much work, without you know having to heat up your uh, block and you know. This thing's take awesome. Take that out, yeah. yeah. So we'll be testing this out of the Boop. weekend on the Flash Forger, the Replicator One, one of these guys. But yeah, you have the compression. Um, compensation on here with this little gear here and the cool little brush to clean out all okay. of the... Uh, so you, you, you use your same there. heat coupler and this is the new block that you replace it with? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then these are all the nozzles. What nozzle sizes are they? Yeah, so they're giving us the... Let me see. It's, it's two. like 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. Yep. <laughs> that's how you're usually... Yeah. yeah, so that's awesome. So this replaces the whole... Uh, mainly the whole thing, right? Yeah, so... Look forward to testing this little guy out. Got all the different nozzles here. Where's the handle for like inserting the the material? Do you still use your same handle? Uh, I think it's this guy right here, which is uh your your, your actual handle it, too. Yeah. Okay. And so it has yeah. a Teflon too, I think. Right? Yep. I okay. got a couple of Teflon. Comes with all the, the stuff here. you need, all the tools as well. Um, it's the whole kit. A little bit pricey, guys, because this is um, manufactured here. Uh, actually, it's today. cheaper than the uh, what's the new oh, one? Everybody the no, the other guy. What um, the E three D? No, no, no. There's like a. There's another one. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the name. It's okay. escaping well, me right now, but it's okay. Well, let me jump back to the website. Audience probably screaming it right now at the screen. <laughs> uh -huh, I know, right? Sorry, guys. Let us know if if you want to check out another one. But um, so, what is what printers does it support? The replicator styles, so the MK8, MK9, MK10, and the Persia i3 slash duplicators. Mm -hmm. So this is like the Wanho duplicator i3. So if you want to print some really fast, high quality NinjaFlex, it's the most challenging stuff to print with because okay. you got to print really slow. And pretty hot. This is pretty pretty awesome. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we just got this in. So we're gonna install it probably over the weekend. Try to do a little little project or something with it. Mm -hmm. So all the instructions and videos and things are here um, for it. And it's available now. So check it out if you guys are interested in um, printing some rubber material and just an overall really nice self cleaning precision. Pretty cool. Has to be printing. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, that's going to do it for this week's Shop Talk. Let's go ahead and jump okay. into this week's Community Makes. All right, let's do Community Makes. Cool project this week, guys. Let me load those up. So the first one, we're going to take a look at over here, uh, this one. All right. First up, Zach Blog. He's back with another series, another, another version of his uh, Practical 3D Printing series. This is episode number two. Yeah, so this we're time, using uh, Fusion 360 here, doing some freeform modeling, too. Yeah. Um, fix his coffee mug. So his coffee mug broke, so why not do the 3D print one? He just got coffee PLA, so he's like, coffee, mm -hmm. PLA, fix my coffee mug. Win-win, <laughs> man. This thing is awesome. So really, really fun uh, video of just a, sort of the process that he went through. Um, I really like it. Um, the first out. version uh, he, he did, or his first episode, he showed how to replace uh, your old sort mm -hmm. of shower curtains with a nice designer type one. So mm -hmm. shout out to Zach Blog. Be sure to subscribe to Zach Blog for more. Share him some love. Thank you, Zach. And next one is from David Watts. David Watts, you know, the, the cool thing to do now is to take like old school retro computers, make them really, really small, 3D print mm -hmm. them, and add an Arduino and yeah. things. So not just like a, like a little fun, cool one, but it, I think it's pretty functional. It's got a temperature sensor, humidity mm -hmm. sensor, and a, an RTC. So it's got a real time clock. Yeah. And so you can put it on your desk. Very awesome. Design files are on Thingiverse. Uh, and I think I believe this code is up there too. 
So very, very cool stuff from David Watts. Be sure to check him out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, too. He's doing really great content, I think, on a weekly basis. Very awesome. Good stuff. Design, very, very yeah, cute. Sure. Yeah. Next one, this is from Chuck. Chuck, on YouTube, does a, does a good mix of like um, practical 3D printing and uh, just fixing stuff around the shop, really. So mm -hmm. this one, and this week he put, uh, or last week, rather, he made a flexible, sort of uh, it's adjustable, right? It's flexible in some sense, mm -hmm. uh, a vacuum adjustment for uh, his table saw. So he just got a table saw, I think, for Christmas or something, and he's just adding all sorts of 3D printed stuff to it. So he's like, just cool. making all these cool fixtures and things, too. So very, very fun. That uh, is the most handiest way to use 3D printing, yeah. to use tools, to make more tools. Extend to your tools, make them yeah. better. <laughs> Good stuff. Be sure to check out Chuck. Subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Good stuff there. And then we have Alex from Super Make Something. Check out Super Make Something on, YouTube, on his YouTube. Uh, he, he, this, this is a pretty beast fantastic. project. Fantastic yeah. video production. The way he uh, put the design everything yeah, really together for this yeah. was excellent. Yeah, so this is a DIY 3D scanner. Uh, he made his own uh, PCB. Um, and he just walks through the whole process in, in, in the video. It's a nice 10 minute video. Mm -hmm. Definitely keeps your attention throughout the whole, the, the whole thing. Nicely explained, yeah, going yeah. to you know, building awesome. the PCB, getting it from Osh Park. Very awesome. Yeah. This is good, good, good video editing. Yeah, Shout out really to you, like Alex. Your... Good stuff. Check out his YouTube channel. Let's get a subscribe count out and everyone else too that we mentioned. Exactly. Yeah, we really like the YouTube channels that really take 3D printing beyond just you know taking a look at another printer, or another filament. This is actually using 3D yeah. printing for projects to build other it's projects. It's really hard stuff, man. It's really hard. So definitely yeah. appreciate the stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at 3D bit, <laughs> 3D kit bash, Quincy. What's up, man? He's actually, I think he's in West Palm Beach. I just oh, found yeah, that out. Yeah. Anyway, he just released Skullbot 001. Very, very cool. So uh, a recently lot of you guys have probably made well. it. Yeah, it was recently featured. 19 people have already made it. We got to make this. We're going to make it. Can we make a really big one on the new Type A? That'd be really cool. We'll <laughs> that like the biggest awesome. one. Yeah. Yeah. Think so. Very, very cool. Self-articulating. All of his builds are designed for the medium, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I think it's, I think it's support free. I'll see about that when I, when I set up the print job. But very, very awesome. Love all the designs coming out of 3D Kit Bash. So check that out. Very awesome job. The always. last one, yeah. The last one I'll talk about is from Thingiverse user uh, DB Bryce. Bryce. Uh, it's a he remix did remix of the Pie Girl. Yeah. So check a look at this, guys. This is his remix of the Pie Girl. Um, so what he what he did. This is right here. He redesigned. Uh, he, he designed it in one to three went to three D design. Uh, it's a remix. Uh, he couldn't get the XTLs to print correctly on his 3D Systems Cube 3 printer. That's the proprietary mm -hmm. printer for the folks over at 3DS. Uh, this design is four millimeters taller, thicker walls, and you redesigned the snap system for attaching these shoulder buttons. Uh, doesn't have all the parts in there, but it's just his, it's just his version for, to working on his machine. That is why we give out all the files, because sometimes mm -hmm. it's not going to work on every printer, especially the sort of more closed systems that have a different type of style of nozzle. Suppliers always change on us, so constantly have to update the... Things can change. Like, we have two different types of speakers. Yeah. Like, sometimes the speaker isn't exactly snap fit, and yeah. you have to, like, you know, Even though it might it look there. the same to us when we get order more parts in, we're like, oh, yeah, it's got to be the same. But then Notable when we actually stuff, build another one, yeah. oh, my God, it's different. Notable stuff is, like, in, in my design, I have, like, these, these posts here, these little legs here that kind of separate uh, the, the USB ports. Not really Cut needed. Them off. They Don't look need them. fancy when yeah. we print them. Not but all the printers can print them. Yeah. So it's a good thing to take the design and just make it work for your exactly. machine. So good good job, sir. And it, the, the, look at that. That's really great. I think it's a definitely raffless design. Excellent And job, I like the sir. sharpness. I don't know. I like bevels and stuff, but sometimes sharp is, is pretty nice. Let's look how sharp it is. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Definitely ensures it's pretty, the pretty. All right. Well, uh, that's going to be it for this week's uh, Community Makes. Just the highlights this week. I'm not going to go through all of them. They are all listed in the blog posts. There, we have quite a few, like Nefertiti's and other things, but mm -hmm. we need to sort of pick some of the highlights. All right. OK, well, that's it for Community Makes. The last bit will be Q&A from our YouTubes. Remember, if you guys have any questions, leave them below in any of the videos, and we'll answer them in a future episode. Let's jump right in to the next thing here. There it is. All right, first question is from Mark. Mark is asking on the LED drum set that we did Quite a few years ago. Quite a few, like I'm 10 years ago now. Two, about two years ago, Two yeah. or three. Uh, I have a question. Do you need a Gemma with each drum, or can the Gemma handle multiple drums? Is there a ma uh, maximum amount, if so? Uh, thanks. Yeah, I would recommend using a Pro Trinket. With a little bit of effort, you can uh, tweak the code to make uh, multiple sensors coming in from one microcontroller. This was yeah. one of our first projects, so we just figured, you know, there's seven bucks. Might as well just get a bunch of um, Gemmas and yeah. just do one for each thing. Mm -hmm. 
because it's basically the Amplify project just re retrofitted. Can we say retrofitted? Yeah. Something fitted, refitted, remixed. Yeah, remixed, yeah. yeah so, so we'll definitely revisit this project soon. Uh, with some contact use, mics. Like, the piezo sensor or something like that. Exactly, yeah. Variation sensor. Or There's a lot of different ways. Yeah. 100 ways to do it, but we'll figure it out. Thank you for the question, Mark. Next one is from Adrian. Uh, on the 3D printed barn doors, uh, what camera are you guys using to record all the videos? Yeah, so we're using a 5D Mark III. We use uh, 7Ds for doing the time lapses. Yeah. GoPro uh, session, GoPros. GoPro 4. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we used to do video production, so that's why we got these, uh, these bodies. Some of our top lenses that we like, 24 to 70. Um, 24 to 70 millimeter mm -hmm. lens, and what's uh, the other? 100 mil micro, macro, macro, micro, use macro. The 50 mil 1.2. Yeah. Um, yeah, we used to do, like I said, we used to do a lot of video and photography. Yeah, it's 14 mil printing, so. at the 7200. Still serving us quite well after the, all these years. Yeah. 10 mil. You got a Sony just uh, a 20 Sony. mil. Tony <laughs> just got a Sony. Uh, oh yeah. So, so uh, definitely, definitely check out uh, his 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 quality of video is just about the. Oh, be up. The, the prices of DSLRs are coming down, especially on the mirrorless ones. Oh so my god, yeah, the new, uh, what are the AC 6300? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to be checking that out. Okay, we're talking too much about cameras. Yeah. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next one. Thanks, Adrian. Next one is from Robert Frisbee. Uh, he's got a mouse part number uh, for silent tack switches, and they are pretty good priced. Yes, I thank you so much for sharing that. I went ahead and put an order for 10 of them, mm -hmm. and I saw some other ones that were in the related uh, section, and I just went ahead and ordered those. So I'm going to play around, test them out, and see what comes of it. Maybe we'll stock some in the Adafruit shop and redesign maybe here or there. Yeah, so yeah. We, maybe we'll re use these for the redesign. Appreciate Super game that. Plan. I was really having a hard time looking for them, because some of them don't explicitly say that they're silent. But this one yeah. looks really good. Maybe okay. we'll be testing these out. Thanks, Robert. Next one is from the Bubber Helmet, TBH, on the 3D printed uh, the barn doors. Uh, can you add a built-in camera to the pot, Touch Pi 3? We actually just made a, a project where it was just a camera yeah, using the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, the, the model, a, model B, like version oh 1 my God, or something. Yeah, yeah it so the older one. It, it's due for a refresh, so we'll yeah. definitely take a look at that using Raspberry Pi 2. Yeah, and the, obviously the built-in, not the built-in, the, the camera module. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, coming soon in the works. Jacob is asking, hey, guys. Uh, oh, he's just saying uh, that the drone is just FYI, a public service amount, PSA. Mm -hmm. Drone registration is only 5 bucks for three years, guys. Yeah. So, that's, a, that's good to know. It's, uh, it's cheap, and you get it for three years. Uh, the main point, though, was just that you can um, you get a you get some very good drone, drones under are, 20 bucks, and don't need to be registered. So yeah, it was really just small. encouraging you guys to enter in in the Drony contest that's yeah. still going on. Remember, check out youtube.com oh, slash is a plug for dronies. That. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. You can win okay. the very fancy reprinted Drony that you Yeah, and around. $100 or $75 and $50 off for second and third price. Mm -hmm. Credit. Yep. So start store. recording. There's no excuse now. Now that you know, it's only five bucks to register. We're we're, we're giving an incentive to go out there and, and, and have a, have yeah. a have a reason to drone it, yeah. to be a droney. Yeah, we wanted to fly <laughs> ours, and what do you know? In Florida, it started raining right when I said. Any every time I say, hey, let's go fly your drone, because I definitely want to uh, fly that with the 360 cam in there. <laughs> and as soon as I said that, it started raining. Well, it's, <laughs> you did the rain dance. So that's what you do. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks for the info. Next one is from Danny Corona on last not a couple of weeks ago the 3D Hangout. Can you uh, can I use the Pi Girl two PCB board on the Super Game Pi? Uh, unfortunately, not. It is very custom to the build, to the parts, and the buttons are are, are very custom. I, mean, I guess you can rewire it somehow, but uh, yeah, I won't fit on the, gonna be not on the case. This yeah, for yeah the Super Game Pi is such a great form factor. Uh, my favorite thing about it is that it, it, it just uses HDMI, yeah. yeah there's 60 no frames, butter smooth. Exactly. No there's frame no buffer need tools. for yeah, software, additional software to be put in there to slow it down yeah. any. So. Yep. Good stuff. Definitely your favorite Super Game Pi. It is. It's, it's one of those, like, I love playing it, but I hate building it. Oh, so. yeah, a lot <laughs> of screws. Thanks, Danny. Next one is from Alvario. Where can I find the case? All of our, all of our design files are free to download. Mm -hmm. um, check out Thingiverse, check out learn.adafruit.com. It has links to all the editable files or the STLs. Like that one. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that one. And there you go. I'll very hope that answers the question. Uh, Bojen Bo Bo is asking, is it possible to get remaining battery power on the, the TFT screen? There is, I think, a built-in uh, icon indicator. Like I forget what the exact icon is. It could be a rainbow, I think. Uh, it gets put it in the uh, in the corner. This is something I heard from uh, Pyramony who said that it might be just for uh, HDMI monitors, mm. but I think there might be something that you can you can find in, in one of the 
one of the forums or just Googling around. I need to do a little bit more research myself, but it is possible. It's there. All right. Next question. Paramedico, paramedic CPO. Uh, could you, uh, would you give away uh, the pie girl to a friend in the UK? Um, I don't have your skills and I want to. What you, who wants one of them really bad? Do you have any suggestions for me how I can get one made? Yes, I think you should check out adafruit.com slash jobs. Post up as a request. And there are makers there looking to remake Adafruit projects and other projects mm -hmm. uh, for some monies. So yeah, post it up see, and see uh, how much people charge you. Yeah, so you usually see companies post on there specifically, yeah. specifically requesting that they rebuild one of our projects yeah. on there. And they'll just pay anybody who's able to you know, yeah. remix it to what their specifications are. Yeah. And yeah, you can always find someone who's willing to uh, build it for you. So it's good for that. And if you are a maker with skills, post it up too. Mm -hmm. There's that one as well. Yeah, just post uh, all your skills you're able to do, and we can match the maker and the person who needs it made. <laughs> <laughs> match made. Then. Maker match make mm -hmm. something. That's pretty cool. And of course, there's makers all over the place, the UK included. Yep. So all right, good question. Maker space, yeah. Next one is from Stefan. I'm completely new, not new that yet, uh, to the Raspberry Pi world, but I have a project in mind specifically for tour guides. Basically, I want to build something I can act as a media player while amping a mic for use uh, with the auxiliary line of the 15 passenger vans. The computer and the video looks like it can do it, but uh, could, could it have an active line in for mic and a line out for both the microphone and the media to go in the car? Yes, we have a USB audio amplifier, uh, audio device that plugs in, works with Linux, mm -hmm. so it works with the Pi. Um, that turns the USB port into an audio in and audio out, so you could use that. Um, but I recommend probably, probably using either Pi 3, but if you can't get the Pi 3, you get a cheap Chromebook or something, and then get that audio uh, yeah, USB right interface. And get like a 20 watt amp, you can also get as well. And you're going to need an amp, so mm -hmm. we have a 20 watt amp, just type in 20 watt amp in the Adafruit store, and the, the Max 9751, something like that. Mm -hmm. is, is a really good class D amp. No heat seek required. It's a tiny little thing, pumps out some mad, mad thumping. Yep. Just like the speakers <laughs> and you're set. Cool. Thanks there for the look. question, Seven. And that is Thank all the questions. This week. Thank you guys so much for the questions. Hope you guys ask more questions in the YouTubes, whatever video. YouTubes, Instagram, or just send a letter over to support at adafruit.com. Yeah. All the tips. Projects keep keep them flowing. We're getting more and more projects in through the, the proper channels. Yep. Love posting them up on if the blogs. If you have specific technical questions on any of the projects, we do have forms. Oh, yes. We need it. .com and need a photo. Um, dedicated full time engineers will answer your questions there. That's right. Forms.adefruit.com. Yep. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for the show, guys. Thank you so much. Leave you off with some links. Adafruit Learning System guides. New, ad, new guides are added weekly, mm -hmm. multiple times a week. Oh, yeah. Um, be sure to check out all the shows. Ask an Engineer is on at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That hasn't changed. And uh, Show and Tell is on at 7.30. So the so way to get on Show and Tell now, so we post on the Google Plus, on the Adafruit Google Plus, uh, I think two days before or something like that, we have, uh, just be sure to, to following or subscribe so you get that post. And then when Wednesday comes around at 7 o'clock-ish. Just comment that you want to show up, you have a project, right. and uh, Phil will physically add you. You can't. Just lurk He's around. He's going to give a link out. We can't invite people anymore because we've oh, maxed right. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is Just the main thing I'm trying to get out of this. Lurk around Because you have to page. stay on that page because you're not going to get invited anymore because we, we maxed out on invites. Yeah, yeah we just too that many. link, that direct link to So that's the way it works. Hangout. Yeah, you just have to lurk around on the post yeah. on Google+. Plus. And definitely show up if you have a project to share. We're always there yeah. every week. Good stuff. Stop by. Thank you so much. And watch Tony D's desk. He's doing every other day, it seems like now. Mm -hmm. He's doing it up. Oh, yeah. Very awesome yeah. Raspberry Pi projects, programming, reviewing of all the cool emulation um, station games. Yeah, that was a really big one, very popular so one. Definitely. A lot of Bluetooth mm -hmm. as well. Bluetooth. He so. does a lot of uh, the programming firmware writing yeah. for a lot of the products. I yeah. Earlier this week, he did uh, OSMC, OS, yeah, Open Source Media Center. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome stream. Yeah, definitely. We got to do a I love his history. Project so in that. depth. Mm -hmm. History stuff. Very good stuff. Shout out to Tony. Doing it up in the live stream on Twitch. Definitely every other day, desk of Lady Adia. Lady Adia. Lady Adia. No, no. Lady no. Ada. Lady Ada. <laughs> Lady Ada. Lady Ada. Definitely check it out. Uh, last uh, couple streams ago, she did a very cool um, review of the uh, other mill. Oh, that was, so, that was so fun PCB to see the mill. live on yeah. the air. I don't think anybody's ever done that before, yeah. so definitely check that out. Yeah. 
get a sneak peek of all the cool Very products stuff. that she's working on. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Well, that's it for this week. Again, coupon code is reactions. I already get 10% off off of everything in the shop except gift certificates and software. If you did like this video, be sure to hit the virtual like button because I have a physical one. <laughs> but uh, if you want a physical like button, you know where to go. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be here next week. But until then, keep on making. Remember to keep on making. Bye, guys.